So using ChatGPT and AI for pretty much business planning, creating standard uh, standard operating agreements, SOPs. Some people are using it for banks and credit unions, which I'm going to show you uh, a little bit here of how you can use it to pretty much get some uh, SBA loans or at least help you get closer to getting an SBA loan because I know that that section was a little overwhelming. Marketing and content ideas because it's all about the prompts. So it's ChatGPT right here. So, and by the way, this is free. Just create an account. I'm using the free account. This is the prompt that I would give it. Oh my God. I want you to advise me like an SBA consultant would. <laughs> and then before I hit enter, I'm going to hit space. Please create an SBA compliant business plan that I can present to the bank for my insert business name or insert business rather. Sorry, insert business. So this would be it right here. So the business that I inserted was my barbershop. And so this is what it spit back out. And so if you guys go to the SBA website, you would see that this is exactly how they would want a business plan laid out. And so it's pretty much creating it for you. You would pretty much like fill it in. Briefly introduce your barbershop business and summarize key points for your business plan. Okay, cool. If you don't know that, then you got bigger fish to fry, right? Include your business name, location, target market, unique selling proposition, and funding requests. Okay, this is like how I would do it on the dime. Hey, uh, or we have essentially... Irv's, Irv's Barbershop. Our location is we're located in Orlando, Florida. Our target market is Latino males between the ages of, I'm going to go college, 21 to 28. So we're located by UCF, University of Central Florida. Our unique selling proposition is that we give haircuts um, at a large, at a 50% student discount on Wednesdays for, for college students who pass their midterms or for college students who are keeping above a 2.5 GPA because we want to help the community. Now the SBA, by the way, this is on the dime. Like, I'm just figuring this stuff out with you in real time. And so now the SBA is seeing that and said, okay, cool. They have an actual business. And so obviously the funding request would fall on the lines of if we're going a 504, if we're going a micro loan, if we're going with an express or we're, if we're going with like a bridge loan, right? How to get funding for multiple businesses. And I'm, I'm picking up the pace a little bit here. Check this out. How to get funding for multiple businesses. So... The first thing that I want you guys to do is I want you to prioritize which business you want to get funding for properly. So what does that mean? Let's say that I have uh, business number one, which is ABC. We're going to do a little bit of thinking here, but I hope I'll help us think it through, right? I'm, I'm tired with you guys. We'll think it through. LLC has <laughs> been open and active since 2014. Business checking with bank since 2015. Tax returns filed each year. Consistent monthly cash flow. Low risk industry. Business to XYZ LLC, LLC opened active since the beginning of the year. No business checking account yet opened. No tax returns filed yet for the business entity. Little to no monthly cash flow, high risk industry. It made it really easy for us. Which business are we going to prioritize? Business one or business two? Yes, it's a one. The reason for that is because as you guys see, it's far more established, has the tax returns, consistent month monthly cash, cash flow, obviously inside of our low risk industry, right? Kept super simple because I wanted you guys to see the, the clear distinction when you're grading, you kind of have like scorecards for your businesses. That's how I want you to think about it. So you know which ones to go with versus which ones not to go to. But when prioritizing it, like you can screenshot this right here. This is essentially how you want to grade it. So I'll probably make a scorecard out of this for my program. I've been playing around with different scorecards uh, of how banks would grade it. And so this would maybe make the final cut. But for the most part, this is going to work as just a strong shell for you to determine, okay, which one should I go with? So the age of the business. So ideally, if it's over two years old, that's already like a strong point. Business or checking account, business checking or savings account already open. Another strong point. Regularly making the deposits and transactions through the accounts. Remember, organic. I love the organic. If you're running a real business, then you have real expenses. So with real expenses, that means that you have actual organic spend. Um, the business is co consistently cash flowing. Account has at least 3K plus in it. And it's never overdrafted or negative. You guys already seen how detrimental that can be to your files when that happens. Operations of business is considered low risk. So obviously, you know, if it's consulting, if it's business management, if it's business not elsewhere classified, um, who else? If it's, um, if it's, yeah, that's about it for, for like the main ones that you would use. So business not, not elsewhere classified, property management, 
and consulting are usually the, the three main that at least would cover this group right here that we're speaking with. And then all business information is clean and differentiated from personal. Now, there are thresholds and there are total credit exposures. And so threshold is the amount allowed of or the amount of credit allowed per business entity, while the total credit exposure is how much you can have for all the accounts. I'll break it down. The total threshold that you can typically have per bank is 150, 150K before they start asking for additional, per, and that's per bank, before they start asking for additional documents. So this is where it gets a little interesting, and this is where every bank kind of has their own rules. I'm going to stick with Chase for today because a lot of us understand Chase. We know Chase, and yeah, it's just one of those banks that most of us have access to in our areas. Let's say that I have LLC1, our main LLC, and I have $50,000 on a business Inc. And then I have like another $150,000 between personal and business credit. I'm sorry, another $100,000 between personal and business credit. The total account that I have with Chase, I've now met my threshold with them. This is why sometimes if there's ever a time where you wonder, should I open an account? Should I close an account? This is how you kind of want to start thinking through this stuff. And this is where reallocation really matters. If you have that 150, that's going to be the total credit exposure that you have on that file. So if you open up another LLC thereafter, most likely that bank, since you're already overexposed for your specifically for your social and the account that you have with them, any other LLC that you bring going forward, they're going to ask for tax stocks. And so my suggestion would be try to use the business that you want to get the most funding for upfront first. So that way, when you hit that 150 threshold, Sometimes it's 200, sometimes it's 225, giving you baseline. And they ask you for additional documentation. The business that actually has the tax returns that you can show when it's not going to be a stated doc, you can actually show it. Right? I can't tell you how many people run into that. Yep. Where they're like, damn, I'm not getting any credit anymore. Damn, now they're asking for docs. That's why. And two options. A, you can either A, close some accounts down, reallocate, close some accounts down. Or B, just look at another bank. Because remember, thresholds and credit exposures are within banks. They're not within an entire system. So you're not going to get blocked. An entire system is just within that bank. So whatever happens in the uh, Amex eco uh, ecosystem is not going to happen over in the uh, Chase. Whatever happens in Chase isn't affecting you over at US Bank and so on. And so you want to structure each round in advance, like I mentioned earlier. And so you want to have no more than four hard inquiries over the last six months. You want to know the type of funding that you're going for prior to applying you want to prioritize your strongest entity. You want to build relationships out when you're in that window that you're kind of just waiting it out, right? 60 to 90 days minimum. Remember that little graph that I showed you guys earlier? When you're running a sequence, you kind of have like that pause break. Then you want to have a goal. Is it 50K? Is it 100K? Typically, clients that I speak to, Irv, if I can get myself my first 100K, I'll be happy.